the vision statement. All right. All right. It is on the two big monitors in the sanctuary. It is in your tripod behind your seat in the middle section. Yeah. And it's in most of your neighbor's mouth. Right. So if we can all stand to our feet, we want to say this thing in unity, yeah. believing that we will see what we say. Right. Hallelujah. So on the count of three, one, two, three. We are New Beginnings Ministries. Our vision is based upon the scriptural theme taken from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which according to the Amplified Version states that, therefore, if any person be engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. Behold, previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Our vision is translated here upon the earth through a dynamic, multicultural, non-denominational ministry emphasizing faith, family, and fellowship. We are a word reading, a word believing, and a word doing kind of people all for God's glory. We will walk in the fruit of the Spirit, operate in the gifts of the Spirit, and daily put on the whole armor of God, believing in the five-fold ministry offices and taking part in the evidence of His glory with signs, wonders, and miracles following. We long to see lives transformed by introducing a real
day, I went to this African dance class. And I've been wanting to do African dance for a long time. You know, so finally I couldn't do it because of my schedule. So this young lady opened up three classes this time. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go. But I kind of forgot about it this week. And then I thought about, I don't know, God, Holy Spirit again, moving. Right. Brought it on my mind. So I text her, Sean. I was trying to get away out. I said, well, Sean, are you going? She's like, yeah, I'm going. Oh, and I was like, you know what? Yeah. Let me go ahead and go. Because I was trying not to go. And that's what we do. God give us what the desire of our hearts. He give us what we want. And then we get settled and lazy. And we don't feel like moving. We don't feel like moving. So we keep trying to make up excuses to not do, to not sow that seed of obedience that God has told you to do. But see, I had to do something natural. Because when I did something natural, God put his super on top of my natural. And I actually ended up getting a blessing by going. So at this acting class, they have these class called lapas. And I said, well, I'm going to buy a lapa today. I'll buy one next time. And somebody was like, I'll buy it for you. Open heaven, God. We say that your people. 
gonna be by this river. I wouldn't get out of this river right now. I, I just wouldn't get out of this river right now. I would just stay right there. I would just stay right there. I would just stay right there. Just 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 right there. Into your now season. 
thank you right now that it is so in Jesus' name. I'm not apologetic though. I 
I am. I really am unapologetic for my craziness of Jesus. Amen. I was unapologetic when I was crazy in the world. I'm unapologetic for my name. So let's get into the word of the Lord. Amen. Pastor T has me on a short time constraint today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your mask back up. Amen. Hallelujah. She said an hour and a half been a little too long. I think she's going to give you an hour. And she gave me a long talk yesterday, y'all. That's what you say. Huh? What'd you say? I'm going to tell y'all how to say happy to be married. Amen. I just went deaf. That's why I said it's not going to be married. Let's give the Lord a hand. Uh, we're going to go into the word of the Lord. I'm going to ask everybody to stand as we reverence this word. Um, we're going to stand and read his word together. Um, this has been a very interesting morning for the first time ever. I probably got done an hour early and I just stopped writing. Um, Y'all catch that in a minute. I got done an hour early because I just stopped writing. Stop writing. So, he, wasn't, he hadn't stopped talking. I just stopped writing. Um, where am I at? Um, Matthew 17, chapter 14, verse. Matthew 17, 14 through 20, we went right back to where we did. Um, the scripture's up on the monitors, um, if you want to read with us. We ask everyone we can read together. I know everybody may have different translations, but we're going to be reading from the King James translation. We're going to be reading Matthew 17, 14 through 20, King James, and we're going to go to Matthew 13, 31 through 32. All right, we're going to read on the count of three. One, two, three. And when they came to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore wax, for all times he falleth into the fire and often into the water. 16. And I called him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? And how long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you beginnings, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove it to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew 13, Matthew 13, 31 to 32, 31 to 32, Matthew 30, 13, we get there, Thank you, Lord. we train, we train today, yes, Lord. Um, one to read, and another parable put forth. which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and become of a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. As we move forward in uh, the work of the Lord today. I want to go back and I want to revisit with you. Um, and we're still in the same place. Amen. Um, we haven't moved. We're not going to move. Um, we're still in the same place that God has had. Yes, Kiki, the reason we are still in the same place, I got Kiki back to so keep it on place, is because until I see what God said, yes, I'm not moving. Right. Until I see what he has been saying, what he has promised, what he has said we can have, 
I am not going to move until I see what God says. Right. So he said, I want to go back and revisit Matthew 17, 20 and B. And this is my release to you on every Sunday morning. Because if you could ever catch this revelation about the seed, it will forever change your life. See, because what we don't realize, Deacon Walker, because I did a study on the mustard seed. And the mustard seed, it is not the smallest seed ever, but it's the, only, it's the smallest seed that will produce a tree. Wow. There are some, okay, see, y'all catch this in there. The mustard seed is not the smallest seed ever, but it is the smallest seed that will produce a tree. Another thing about the mustard seed, a mustard seed can be planted in all kind of ground. Whether it's parched, whether it's clay, or whether it's dirt, and it will produce. Also about the mustard seed, it can withstand any kind of elements that come against it. Why am I telling you all that in the backdrop? Because I'm telling you, all you got to do is just have this little bit of mustard seed faith. And it will be able to withstand. Can I see that, sweetie? Um, all you have to have, I was going to wear my mustard seed faith shirt. But um, I got to get past the seed, get to the tree, That's and good. tell you what you're about to receive is going to be bigger than what you ever imagined. Yeah. Now, when I'm going to come to the side and talk to me, amen? Because I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that you may not be able to see it right now, because I just spoke a mustard seed in you. But God is saying it's not going to be long before you see this thing produce, and it's going to outdo and restore. Up. He said, as long as you have this planet, I am about to do something crazy in your life that you ain't never seen before. That's all you need. You just need a little bit. You don't need all this big faith that everybody been trying to tell you. You need big faith. You don't need all you need is the faith of a mustard seed. And he said, if you're going to be able to do great exploits that's going to go beyond your, even your imagination. If I get this revelation, if I can just get this, if I can just get this, everybody sitting here, what you don't know right now, you're a seed for. You are a seed for because you have not yet reached your harvest yet. Uh, God said that he's about to do in this season, though, he's about to take what has been insignificant, like I told you on last week, He's about to take all the ones sitting here, all the ones that everybody passed over, all the ones that got known, all the ones where people said that you weren't going to be nothing, all the ones. For a matter of fact, you know the person that left you and said you weren't going to be nothing without them? Oh, I needed you to be in my seed for them because I need to be planted somewhere else. Because when I get planted somewhere else, that same thing said wasn't going to be nothing, was going to be the same one you're going to have to come get something from. For so a matter of fact, if I could just talk to one or two people that been planted, I am so glad you planted me when you're planted. I thought it was over, but what I found out, baby, I was just planted. I thought I was about to give up Tiki, but guess what? I was just planted. And I, I'm talking to some planted people right now that's about to make a come up like never before, and what they didn't see, they're about to see it, and you're about to go from a seed to a tree. This ain't for everybody. It may be for the back. It may be for Facebook. It may be for the ones in the balcony. But I'll tell you what, I'm about to get mine. Let me go back and revisit Matthew 17, 20. Slow walking in today. I say unto new beginnings. And new beginnings just have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. New beginnings. And everybody who visited new beginnings today. You gonna say unto your mountain. Remove his young, and it shall not make. Let me tell you something about a born again believer. Maybe ain't in my vocabulary. Maybe doesn't even belong in my 
my mouth maybe is a cuss word to God because he ain't maybe done nothing. He always done what he said he was going to do. And I stand in his place and say, you're going to be able to speak to whatever has been in your way. And you're going to be able to decree and declare that it's about to get out of your way. For a matter of fact, the seed is going to move the mountain. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. I said, your seed is going to move the mountain. God is saying, all you got to have is this much. And it'll move everything out your way right now. And he made an exchange. Because he said, I want to let you know, you've been praying to me, but I've empowered you to do what I did. Because what happened one time, he was walking by the fig tree, and he was walking by it, and uh, um, he cursed the fig tree because he went to get leaves from the fig tree, but there was no fruit. Some of y'all got some leaves. Y'all okay. Some people got some leaves, but they ain't got no fruit. And he said, if I come to you and you acting like you something, you better be what you say you are. So because it was, because y'all know church folks can be churchy in church. Oh, I wasn't supposed to go there? Y'all know church folks, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. How's your name? I'm highly blessed and all that kind of thing. And get out of their car and will cuss you. I'm not talking about none of y'all. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about none of y'all. I'm not. I'm not talking about y'all because I know New Beginners got the fruit. Amen? And so he went by the tree. He cursed the fig tree because he went to get something out of it. But what he went to get, what it was displaying, he could not get it out of it. So then he left it. He went into the temple. They were having, they were selling stuff. They had turned the church into a place of merchandise. And that's the one time you see Jesus coming in and turned over some tables. He's walking back with his disciples. They see the tree sitting there. They ask the question. They said, Master, you mean you cursed? Look at this tree. He said, yes. He said, I spoke to the tree, but let me tell you something. I'm going to give you what I got. And you're going to be able to, if you got the faith of God, for a matter of fact, he said, I'm not going to even ask you to have your faith. I'm about to give you my faith. Mark 11 says, have faith in God. It's what you have faith in is going to determine what you can get out of it. The object determines how much movement you can get. So if I put my faith in God and I got God in me, I can go and do the same thing that God did. And now I can do impossible things because he has infused me with the impossibilities of him. So when I go to speak to something, something got to happen. How do I know? Because in Genesis he's spoken and it happened. How do I know? Jesus came and spoke and it happened. Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost spoke and it happened. I got the Holy Ghost right now. So now I can speak just like my daddy, just like my brother. I can speak the same thing and I can get the same kind of result. But all I need to have is a little bit of this faith that will move everything out the way. Let me keep on Am I good? I'm good at that. Uh, amen. That was just a prelude, amen. I'm watching the clock. I'm talking about this prelude. So the title, the title, my blessed brother dear, is the manifestation of your faith. My subtopic today, you about to see the tree. Thank you, son. You caught it. You caught it. You caught it. So again, um, I got some things to release today, but you know I'm always going to give you scripture to build you up to that. So um, again, we are still talking about faith. And I want to, again, reiterate in New Beginnings Ministries, we're not talking about the manifestation of faith. We're talking about the manifestation of faith. So I don't want you to get one thing and then get back in the home. Until you pull in everything God tells you to pull in, be 
Because I come to tell you, the people that surround you right now, you're going to need their help in bringing in all this next step you're about to get. Okay? Let me do it on. So, I'm, 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 so, so this is, I'm not talking about the manifestation. I'm talking about the manifestations of whose faith? Of your faith. So this morning, as I was getting ready, sweetie, God hit me with a word this morning. So I'm going to hit y'all with it. So I'm talking about the plurality oh. of what you will believe. That's why I know the Holy Ghost is on me. When I got to go look in the Westford Dictionary to find out if this is even a word. Because I said, plurality? He said, yeah, I'm about to do the, anybody in here ready for some pluriality? <laughs> so the pluriality, uh, uh, he said, I'm about to meet you. <laughs> Are y'all ready for this? I'm talking about the pluriality of what you have been believing. Right. Now, pluriality, are y'all ready for the definition of pluriality? I told you I'm teaching today. The definition of pluriality is the state of being plural, the state of being numerous, and a large, large number. number or quantity. In other words, he say, I'm about to make you my pluriality. I, okay, I'm, in other words, I'm about to multiply you. I'm about to make you become great. I'm about to make you unnumberable. I'm about to do stuff that you are going to become my evidence of the definition of pluriality. I think that's going to be my next t-shirt, a seed to pluriality. Because what you don't know, that one seed of obedience is about to give you a harvest like you never saw. Okay, we go. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord, pluriality me. No, you can't do it. Sit down. People who want pluriality, they got to be in a position of standing up to receive what God want to do for them. Somebody shout with me. Well, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Pluriality is about to hit your house. Pluriality is about to hit your bank account. Pluriality is about to hit everything of mine. God said I'm about to make my people a people of pluriality, which means you're going to be innumerable in this season that you're about to walk into. Somebody talk that one back. Reality. So let me take you to the scripture and prove that to you. Um, Mark 9, 23 and B. Um, in the Passion Bible, we have been learning if you are able to believe all things. Did he say some things? He said all things are possible to the believer. Now, I'm talking to believers right now. He said, if you are, if you are, this is personal now. If you are able to believe, all things are possible to the believer. Last week we learned in Matthew 8, 13, the Passion Bible, because I'm going somewhere with this all thing. He said, all that you believe for will be done for you. He didn't say all that you are believing me for. Yes. He said all that you have believed for. In other words, when I come to him, everything that I have already believed him for, he is telling me, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm telling you because there's about to be an explosion from here. Because there's some people, this is what he told me to tell some of y'all. And Mark, you about to go crazy. Because he said everything you done wrote, I'm about to make it come to pass. It's no longer going to be written. You're about to 
to walk this thing out. And people are going to see the notebook when they see you. All right? I told you, I told you. I already had to release that because I know she has kept a notebook from the first day she sat here. When she stepped in New Beginning, she started writing down what God said. And God said, write the vision and make it plan. And he said, I'm going to make it come to pass at the appointed time. I got an announcement to make today. The appointment is right now. No, no, no. I need some believers to act like they are believing the appointment is right now. God said, I'm about to meet you with what you've been believing me for. And I'm going to take care of the past. And we ain't even going to worry about the future. Oh. Can I give you the definition of all? We good? We good? We good? Can I give you the definition of all? <laughs> she may come back in in a few minutes, amen. I think, because see, sometimes you start thinking back on everything God said he was going to do. I wish like the people in the back have caught this already. And I believe the people on Facebook have caught it already. I have to see where Facebook is at right now. But when you have been believing God for all of it, and you've been standing in a place, and finally God stepped in while you've been looking back on everything God said he was going to do for you. Because every now and then you got to go pull out your history book, the things that he already said he was going to do for you. I know what he said he's going to do for you. I'm not, I'm not tripping, but I ain't studying you right now. Because right now I need to get my stuff. I see you. You got the evidence. So if God the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and he ain't got no respect for a person, that means I must be next. Somebody need to tell me next. Be next. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. So, yeah. Hallelujah. Remember we said all? Oh. Can I give you the definition of all? Oh. The definition of all, that's why Bob's out there still just going crazy. <laughs> The whole amount. Uh -huh. The quantity or extent of as much as possible. So, Sonia, I went a little further because I felt smart today. So I looked in the Webster Collegiate. Okay. Go ahead. I told you, oh, no, I'm not. See, I'll tell y'all when I be talking like this, this ain't me. Because I really talk like, yo, what's up? What's happening? What's kicking? You know what I'm saying? Hey, when we got start making me talk educated, I know it's the Holy Ghost song. <laughs> Do you know you can be in the Holy Ghost and get a doctor's degree and never have to go to the school? See, y'all been trying to go to school to get it. I just go to the Holy Ghost and get it. So, again, all, as much as possible, the Westford Collegiate. He said the whole number, quantity or amount. He said, for a matter of fact, in this season, I'm about to meet you in totality. Thank you, Elder Kim. Thank you so much. I know there's a word that God is saying. He said, I'm about to meet you. I'm about to meet your mustard seed in totality. He said in Matthew 8 and 13, he said, tell you by faith, he's about to take every logos word. He said, I'm about to take every logos word that when I gave it to you was information. But I'm about to give you some revelation. And I'm about to take that thing off the pages. And I'm about to turn it into my rhema. And it's about to start walking and living around you. And you're going to be the thing that I'm about to make happen in this season. So, I told you I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. 
because I spent too much time trying to get y'all into a place, and then I can't finish what I got to say, so I'm going to say what I got to say. He said, now listen to this bar, and I hope you listen to this bar. He said he's about to go back for New Beginnings Ministries 10 years. He said, I'm going back 10 years from the start of this ministry, and everything you heard, everything that's been prophesied, and everything that you believe, he said, I'm about to meet you here in 2020, and you about to see everything that I ever said that I was going to do for you, and it's about to happen in your life at your next shot of faith. So let me tell you what accumulated is. 
And I didn't know this until I started talking to people with real jobs. Uh, uh. I can say government jobs. Because uh, uh, uh. people with your real jobs, you know, the ones they don't work hard on to get a lot of money. <laughs> Y'all don't know the less, less money you make, the, the more you work. The more money you make, the more they use this. Um, so that's why I tell you, I'm not going to go there. So I was talking one time to one of my pastors named Adrian, who I was going to tell who was. And I find out every year that she leaves something on the table, she don't lose it. And how much she got? Man. She can take she a whole year off. Right take a she whole year off. Tired. probably live for the next 10 years. She just ain't realized it yet. So what happens is, for all y'all to get accumulated stuff, when you don't use your sick time, when you don't use your vacation time, you don't lose it. Some jobs you lose it, they make you take it. Some jobs just let you keep on accumulating. And so what you do, you keep on accumulating and accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. Then sometimes they'll come to you and they'll make you use some of it. You know, just to kind of get the books kind of settled. But at, at the end deal, whatever you left on the table, yeah. for how many other years you've been there, you get the whole thing. Yeah. So in the heavenly realm, that means whatever I left on the table, whatever rolled over, and a lot of times when there's a rollover involved in it, they will also add some interest and some penalties. In other words, you just won't get back what you put in. You got to get something greater back because what happened, it became seed for the company. And so now since it was seed when you planted it, when it come back to you, it got to come back in harvest form. So I said all that to say, for all of y'all that didn't get it in maybe 2000, what's this, 2020? If you didn't get it in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 18 and 19. He said, I have accumulated every oh what? Wow. He said, I have accumulated everything I've always said to you. And because I'm God and I can't lie, I've got to do what I said to do. I've just been trying to build your faith to get you to a point where you can receive everything I'm about to get you without you telling it and go back. Because God said this next step ain't going to be so big. You don't want to give it back. Because you don't think you stole something. But God said, no, I took everything back from the enemy that took it from you. And I'm about to pay you everything. Enlarge your place in your tent. He says, stretch your tent curtain wide and do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your strengths. Stays. For you, new beginnings, yes, will spread out to the right yes, and spread out to the left. Yes, he, he's prophesying 
what's about to come your way. And he's telling you, you got to enlarge your territory. Because the tension you're in right now will not hold the accumulated blessing. So he starts giving them instructions. Because he said, first of all, as he began to talk, he said, because I'm about to take away your shame. And he said, in other words, I'm about to take away your past mistakes. I'm about to take away that thing that made you go in high. I'm, I'm about to I'm about to erase that thing. They won't even see it. He said, wait, wait, when they come up, they won't even see your past mistakes. Well, that fact, he said, I'm wiping off all the residue. They won't even see your mistake. They won't even see what you went through. He said, I'm about to cover you, but at the same time, I'm about to restore you. restored right now. I'm getting stuff back that I lost 10 years ago. I did a bad business deal about 10 years ago. And guess what? It's over now. Guess what? Now I'm getting all my stuff back. God needs to shout glory! I feel like preaching, but I gotta hold it down. I do. I feel like preaching because you don't know what God is about to do for you. And I decree and declare for everybody who is standing on their feet right now, God's favor is about to hit your mouth. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So in 24 and 3, it says this. For you were spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. You here with me. I love it because you gotta listen to me. Your descendants. True. I told you he's not the theology you Praise the Lord. He didn't say you was about to. He said, what I'm about to do for you is about to go into generations. Your descendants, S, will dispose nations and settle in desolate cities. So he's saying, I'm about to move people out of the land, out of the city. We ain't just going to get that house. My God is a priority God. We got to start getting some houses. I'm not getting a business. God ain't never had a period in his name. He's always had a comma to be continued. For a matter of fact, his name is Excelera. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, so everything you saw that he was going to do had what on it? Essence. Because in the beginning he said, what if he's going to give us? All of it. Not some of it. He said, and if you're, you can believe all, I'll give you all. But whatever you can't believe, that just means somebody else gonna pick it up. And me and Pastor T don't mind taking whatever you leave on the table. Because the table won't be set. It's just a matter if you're gonna get what God said you can have. But if he ain't gonna be a liar, it's still gonna be there. So I might as well go in and get your stuff while I'm getting my stuff. So all that was right. So who began this? I need to re-release something in my office. God said, release this. He said, tell New Beginnings Ministry, the favor of God is on your life right now. Me and Pastor T. And some other people around us, we have gotten to the place where we just mentioned something and 
somebody give us the money to go get it. So I got to test that. Pastor Lee want to go for a little getaway. She just went for her little getaway a couple of weeks ago. Her room was already paid for. Somebody came and said, let me give you $300 just so you can go do whatever you want to do. I'm telling you, y'all. Yesterday, I wanted to go buy some weights for my wife. Somebody said, where are you going? I said, going to buy some weights for Pastor T. They said, I'm about to cash after you the money. I'm telling you, you're going to have something on your mind, but God's going to have somebody else pay for it. <laughs> because your favor is on you. And when favor is on you, supernatural, crazy stuff starts happening on your behalf that you ain't even got to pay for. You just got to be ready to receive it. I wish I had one. I'm glad. Everybody who just shouted, God said he's about to drop that favor on your heart. You're about to think about it and he's going to do it. Well, matter of fact, for all of y'all that stood up right then, I'm going to upgrade you. You're about to get upgraded. I see you over there. I see you on Facebook. Who got up and said, Lord, I want your favor. He said, because you stood up, now I'm about to upgrade you. You ain't just favoring, you're highly favored. And you ain't going to be a saying, you're going to be the evidence. When people ask you how you get it, God paid for it. Where did you get that from? God paid it to me. How much can you pay for it? Absolutely nothing. That's what favor. Favor been paying your car, though. He just told you to go get the car. So when favor hit your house, he just wants you to go do whatever he told you to do. Because then you allow favor to step in and stop. Y'all shout favor! Uh oh, something just moved. Can y'all feel it? Something just moved. Y'all just called it in. It's on your way. It's about to pay the bills. Pay off your house. Pay off your car. I'll be playing. Off your car. Yeah. It ain't in there yet. But I ain't playing. One day I'm going to mailbox. No, not no mail stuff. One day somebody just gonna cash at me. And they're gonna say fraudulent activity. Because the money gonna be so big, they're gonna figure something off. Okay, I'm coming back. I'm going. So lock everything up. Ain't nobody ever dropped that much money in the account before. I'm telling you, for people that's favor, I'm releasing it on New Beginners right now. Because while everybody else has been laying everybody else during COVID, New Beginners been putting people on payroll. Okay, sit down. I know. You want to be here again, I know. I know. As soon as you both go down to the church and you look at you know that way today, man, praise the Lord. I believe you may find your husband today, praise the Lord. See, that's what happens when favor on your life. Every time something is spoken that you want to receive, you make a reaction to what you believe in God gonna do. And because you're crazy enough to jump up and shout in the midst of everybody, God said, I'm gonna bless you like that. But he might get you in the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Whatever it is, get in the tongue and come over here. He's going to be real. Because he's going to look so good, he's going to be where you go, baby. I go. We have seen it happen here. We had somebody join our church one time, and they hugged along to this big mega church. And she said, baby, if you're going to be with me, you got to come with me. He ended up joining this church. He 
said, I'm going to make it worth your time. Yeah. He's been smiling ever since, amen. We haven't seen him in a while, but he's been smiling ever since. <laughs> According to the Apostle. <laughs> Apostle. <laughs> Stop it. Put your mask back on. You got it on. Don't be making all that noise down. And, and let me. And, and you'll be in it now, highly favored. And this is the other part that goes along with it. And the Lord is with you. Oh, See, now you're favored and the Lord is with you. He said, I'm with you now in the next move you're about to make. Know that my favor is with you and I'm with you. So now you can make some moves that go beyond man's comprehension. So again, and Acts. Um, according to Acts 1 and 3, I want to go back to, um, he told 20, he told New Beginners in 2020, this was going to be the year of manifestations. Yes. It wasn't going to be one thing happening. Yes. It was going to be the plurality. I need to get you ready for the plurality. Yes. I need you to get ready to expand, uh, expand yourself. Yes. I need you to quit looking at where you at now and what you have now. Yes. And I need you to look at where you're going. Yes. Quit looking at one big apartments. Looking at houses that don't have no garage. Yes. Start going and saying, I need a three car garage with my one car self. Yes. I'm not talking about where I'm at, I'm talking about where I'm going. I don't need to buy any garage, he'll fill the garage. Yes. So it's according to Acts 1 and 3. I got this story. I got this story. I need about okay, about there, big man. According to Acts one and three, this year of um, Amplified, to them, to new beginnings, he also showed himself alive after his passion, his suffering in the garden on the cross. Here we go with the essence again by a series, curiosity. Okay, series. Uh, by a series of many convincing demonstrations, plurality, unquestionable evidences, evidences, All right. and infallible proofs. Did y'all hear that? Yes. Series of many. How many? Yes. As many as you need, that's how many he gonna do. Many convincing demonstrations, and it's going to be unquestionable evidences and infallible proofs. 2020, he was going to display you, me, you, you and you, as being his 67th book of the Bible. I know there are only 66 books that are written. But when he wrote the Bible, he wasn't finished. Because he had not birthed you yet. And so when he placed you here on the earth, he wanted to make you a living, walking epistle on the word of God that all men could read. And so he wanted to take you to make you an extension of who he is because they don't see him anymore, but they see you now. So he wanted to make you the evidence of what God was going to do here in the earth by many convincing demonstrations. That's why the people on your job saw you come out. That's why they knew you had cancer and you don't have it no more. Because he needed you to be the living one because they weren't going to read the Bible and believe it. But they had seen the report because they came in the email form that you weren't going to be back at all and you're back at your desk. I got to keep on going. I got to keep on going. I got to keep on going. <sighs> so you're about to be Acts 4, 4 through 16. You about to be undeniable evidence because in Acts the fourth chapter, if you can put that up, Acts the fourth chapter, I probably don't have time to go through it. But what happened? The man at the gate of beautiful, he they had um, he had gone through his healing and everything. Went into in the third chapter, he come into the temple, they see him and all that. The fourth chapter, they were they were a little um, ticked off because 
Um, here it was, this man who was proven that Jesus was Jesus. I mean, no, the power of God had not been transferred to man. Because Jesus didn't do this healing. Uh, Peter and him did that healing at the gate of beautiful, right? So they stand in there, and they are really angry because they're like, what's going on here? Go down to 14, please. 14. 14. And beholding the man, which was healed, healed he was standing there with them, and they couldn't say nothing. Keep on going, 15. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, and this is the conversation they're having about you, 16, saying, what shall we do with Pastor T? For well, indeed, there has been a notable miracle has been done by them and is manifest to all them who've been looking at them. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm good. A notable miracle, which means we now have documented evidence. You can't even question this because we saw him there. They saw you there. They saw you at the dope house. They saw you at the strip club. They saw you at the bar. They saw you creeping over that other girl in God's house. But guess what? Now you are a notable miracle. Because now, Look at me now. I am in a... Okay. That's how I got people to come to church with me, dog. When I got saved, shoot. They were like this. Where are you going today? I said, I'm going to church. They said, you lied. They would, because that was the kind of life I live. All my friends like, where are you going today, man? I said, I'm going to church. I'm Brother Greg now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get me acting like that, amen. So I ain't about to hold it down, amen. So they started coming to church with me. Muslims. Drug addicts. Drunks. Whoremongers. Started getting saved. And filled with the Holy Ghost. And baptized. Because I was a notable. I was the 67th book in the Bible that they had not read yet, but when they read me, it bumped to the head. So, so I need to talk about something, and give me about 15 minutes to tell the story, because um, this is a story, I'm like, back to one of my stories. So right now, if you notice, Deja's not here, right? Deja's not here, so I want to tell someone, please don't think you heard this story before, because I got a whole nother round to it, because a lot of times y'all hear my stories, y'all say, I already heard that story, believe me, when I tell the story, I got something else to add to the story, okay? So I want to talk about Deja. Um, and so for some of you guys that don't know, Deja is the one who does the drawings. You know, the young lady is set up there and she does the artistry and we bring it down here and we prophesy about it. Last year on August the 4th, I test her mother to find out. Last year on August the 4th, Deja got in an accident, leave her from Cedar Point, and um, a car came on the wrong side of the road and ran into them head on, and it exploded the car. It didn't annihilate the car. Am I right, Keithy? It exploded the car. Out of those four people, two people died right there. Two people came out. Deja was one of them. Now, let me tell you what happened. That Sunday, before Deja went to Cedar Point, she was here. Uh -huh. She came to church, she was sitting right over there, and Deja's very calm and laid back, and you never know Deja listening to you. Uh, but she'd be listening all the time. And so I had preached a message, so the mother sent this to me this morning. She said, I remember that day, because you preached this message, and this is going to blow your mind. I preached a message, what would you do if God asked you for your Isaac? What would you do if God asked you for what he had promised you? Deja was her only child. And so when this happened, she remembered that message. I got a call that morning about 3 o'clock in the morning. It was D on the phone. She was like, you know, she's kind of hysterical. She was saying something happened to Deja. And I was kind of out of it, so um, I didn't really comprehend everything she was saying. And I prayed for her. We got off the phone. But then that morning when I got up, she sent me a text of the car. And the text of the car, I knew something horrendous had happened. I called her right away. Deja came out of that thing okay. But 
Deja was in a place. Now, I want to say this. Pastor T went to see Deja the first time. Deja, I think, ended up having seven surgeries. I want to say seven surgeries. They were going to take her to do an eighth surgery, and God had already healed it. Now, see, I said, first of all, Deja came out of an accident and killed somebody. And they went to do the eighth surgery, which is a new beginning. And they went to do the surgery, Daryl, and they went in and it was already healed. The body of Christ just got in the past. I'm good. I'm good. I'm really good. Amen. I'm really good. That's why some of y'all can't get your blessing because you won't celebrate when God does another miracle for somebody else. And you know some of y'all right now need a miracle. And you were just a patty cake. So God knows he was a bless you all. You were doing patty cake. He just don't want somebody who's going to praise him. No. I'm going to finish telling the story. And the one thing that blew our mind, because when Pastor T went to see her, she made it to, to her before I could. She said, baby, I was, I was just totally out there. Gummy Deja had her head wrapped. She, I think she had both her arms broken, big both legs, and oh, I mean, she was, I mean, she had taken a hit. And Pastor T went in there to see her, and the one thing she would never do, and Pastor T would attest to this, not one day did Deja complain. For well, a matter of fact, you would go see Deja and she would encourage you. So I got a little side note. Stop complaining. Who am I talking to right now? Y'all need to stop complaining. And if you would just do it, the book of James says, we can count it all more. Y'all got three meals, and some of y'all can tell us on four or five meals. Amen. And you got a house, you got a roof, you got cars, you got money, you got all that, and you still complaining. Yeah, I'm talking to the body right now. Stop complaining. So what it ain't came through yet? Count it all short. You could be in a whole lot worse, but since God got you, all things are working together for the good.
this, this, this woman could have been burying her daughter. And the daughter could have been sitting there complaining and talking about the wrong way driver and everything else that was going around. And all she was doing was counting the joy. And because she counted in joy, let me tell you, within 30 days, then she was at home.
Am I right? Am I, I'm in there, right? I can tell the story, y'all. God has anointed me to tell stories. So then she said, well, but it's 15,000 still left. She said, then they got another email and it knocked out another 9,000. She said, so in her mind, she was like, okay, let me go on and get this loan so I can finish paying off my baby stuff. But we were sitting up in my office last Tuesday and Deja called. She said, can I answer this? I said, sure. It was Deja on the London line. Not excited, not for this is excited, Deja Hey, mom. She said, yes, Deja, what's going on? I'm talking to Apostle. Good, I'm glad you're there with him. I wanted to let you know, I got another email and I got another grant and my due bill now is zero. <laughs> Muhammad could do that. 
Confucius couldn't do that. The only person that could do that was Jesus. And then when they say, you know, I'm struggling in school. I don't know how we're going to pay our tuition. And she said, not fully paid for. Wait a minute, yours what? Your mama rich? No, my daddy is. My daddy got riches that are untold. When we were in, uh, what was that, China? I think it was China. And uh, I wanted to go back on the trip. This guy named Leonard Dupre. He said, do you want the money, Pastor Greg? I said, yeah. And see, thank God for Pastor T preaching on prayer. It ain't loud. It ain't long. And what else? It ain't loud. It ain't long. See, because we used to. And you go, where? And broke. Because you know what? Yeah. He walked up to me. He said, give me a hand, Pastor Greg. He said, Father, be afraid of me. You know, I know you own cattle on a thousand years. He said, sell a cow, and because it's yours, you can ask for what you want, and you'll get it. And then when you're gone, vote them all. Sell a cow. <laughs> sell a cow. And give the money to Pastor Greg so he can go on the next trip. In Jesus' name. Wasn't that crazy? Well, it was easy. So I want to release this last thing to you. Could you put up? Um, I got to release this. Deuteronomy 28 and 8. Because now we're ready now. I'm about to release the commanded blessing on you. This is the commanded blessing. The Lord shall command the blessing upon new beginnings ministry, thy store houses, and all thou set thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee, new beginners, which the Lord thy God is about to give. So I release it in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 28, maybe. Father, for all the believers, they are getting ready for the plurality of you. They're about to move some things to make room for this next blessing. And Father, we thank you right now. And Father, we seal this, not with a worship, not with a hand clap, but with a sign.
realize there's something um, very prophetic about it. Because when we came to get this building, they were asking 90 something thousand. Um, I, I came back and offered him something, and the guy asked me, no, Deacon told me, God gonna give y'all this building for 75,000. Deacon prophesied that. He prophesied that. God gonna give you that building for 75,000. And so, when we came to look at the building, it was 90,000. I came back and I gave him a bid, I think of 85,000. And the guy said, why did you overbid? I said, I didn't overbid. You said it was um, 90 some thousand. He said, since the last time I seen you, which was in a month's time, they dropped it to 75,000. I'm telling you, God is about to do some drop in our lives. Something supernatural, and y'all gonna get the evidence, and it's gonna be documented. I'm telling you, when they give you the document, don't, don't, we got a document now of 225000 dollars We got the document, right? Do we got the document? Then the guy said, how much is it gonna cost to build that parking lot to worth two thousand dollars I decree and declare the devil is alive. I'm going to show y'all the document because when I show you the document of what we're going to end up paying for, who we pay for? Oh, no, not nothing but love. If we have to find a manifestation, and then when I show you the document that they gave us this house right here, see y'all, y'all don't know. Right and then the house next to it is for sale for the foreclosure. And they just need to get a tax write off and find out we find out what's the degree and we get that. Yeah. And then because COVID shut down that car wash and all we want the car wash, so we can work the guys around here to have jobs, we're going to have that too. Yeah. And then those three lots over there, we just over there messing around over the law. We're going to have that too. And the guy who gave us that one piece of parcel of the news, he got the brown house next to it, and he's gonna say, Pastor Greg, you know what? I'm just gonna give y'all that too. I'm telling you, perpetual is about to hit y'all. Quit, quit looking at just where you at right now. Cause it's gonna be big, guess why? Because it's God. So Father, we thank you. We honor and praise you today for your word. We thank you for these, your people. They have received everything. Now they're going to go home. I heard the Lord saying this to some people here. You need to go open up another bank account. Just, just put $10 in it or something. Go see Paige. He, he'll, he'll take care of you. I'm telling you, he'll take care of you. Go see him. We should put all our money in his bank. Amen. We go, you don't think, how many millionaires y'all got in your church? He said, I don't know, I lost count. So then they gonna take this gentleman that doesn't have a degree at all in financing. Do you got a degree? No degree. No degree. Do you, you got a college degree? No He got a street degree. He gonna be the evidence. Well, we're going to let you go until we saw all your deposits. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, God has set y'all up. So don't be weary. Do you hear me? Don't you be weary. This is going to be greater. This here is going to be greater than what you just left. This here is going to be greater. your heads for one minute. I always have to go fishing before I close out. This, this is a time that we want to give an invitation for Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's for you to Facebook or anybody in the back. We don't want to leave out today without giving us an invitation. For a matter of fact, today the Lord is impressing on me. Neither one of them are going to have to come up here because this is going to be very private. I don't believe that we should put people on the spot. So two, two things. That's going to be for um, salvation and anybody who has left a place in God. 
and they just want restoration. Please keep your head bowed. Keep, keep your head bowed. Keep your head bowed. If anybody in that place of either salvation or restoration, just raise your hands. I'm the only one looking. I am the only one looking. Amen. All right. Amen. I'll see you, my brother. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. This is the time, y'all. Um, I canceled the spirit of shame. You ain't got nothing but I'm the only one watching. I'm the only one watching. That's why I'm making sure everybody's here this time. We all good? On the back? Amen. I got you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I see you, man. I see you. Thank you. While everybody's here to down, I want you to see whose hands are up. Let's pray this prayer. Say, Father, here I am. I'm here again. First of all, I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart. love and the salvation path. Now my next prayer, I want y'all to repeat after me. Father, here I am today. Create me a clean heart. Renew me a right spirit. Wash me today, Father. And I thank you for my cleansing. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all give God a praise. new, oh, Father God, and we thank you for it right now, Lord, hallelujah. We come against any attack of the enemy or the word that you just came out of this mouth, oh, Father God. But, Lord, you shall begin, oh, Father God, to bless him exceedingly, abundantly, and above all he can ask for a thing in this season because he sold a seed of obedience today by preaching your word in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.
man, they said, we do, I give every, they give on the off week, like every other week they would give for the parking lot place. And they said, this is not my week to give to the parking lot place. I said, put something in the envelope. Amen. Even though this is your off week, you feel, you know, because you have a schedule, I understand that. But get something to put in for today to, for the parking lot place. Because we are going to break, break crown. And the usher is going to have hand sanitizer. As for anybody who's swiping, make sure you sanitize your hands before approaching one of our ministers. Also, be sure to um, continue to practice social distancing. So we still want to continue that even while we're getting. When you see someone up here giving, just hold back a little bit. Give them an opportunity to put their offering in the basket or even give, give their change for change before you move to the basket. Amen. Those in the back, we also have someone back there to accommodate you. For your offering if you want to swipe your card and we also have you look on the board we have our cash app information so again you know give 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 so what we're going to do at this point we're going to have our principal of giving and our minister Rashonda is going to minister our principal of giving amen okay my principal is principal number five and principal number five says God not only expects us to tithe but to even grow so that we are giving more than a tithe and the scripture is 2 Corinthians 8 and 7. And it says, since you excel, I'm going to read it in two translations, the New Living and the Passion. It says, since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. The Passion says, you do well and excel in every respect in unstoppable faith and powerful preaching. <coughs> In revelation knowledge, in your passion and devotion, and in sharing the love we have shown to you. So make sure that you also excel in grace filled generosity. So um, you guys know I'm a teacher by nature, right? In the spirit. So uh, I have a demonstration to show you. Okay. So you know, we work. Some of us have, who have jobs, right? We work and every week or every two weeks, you're expecting a paycheck, right? Yeah. You put in your work, you're expecting something, right? Okay, so it's Friday. Let's say it's Friday. And um, it's payday, right? Amen. So, so count out 10 of these. So this is $100 per banana, okay?
you for everyone under the sound of my voice who was ever to, able to give today. Lord, we ask that as they gave and they stretched, Lord, that you will begin to stretch their finances, Lord. You begin, to, you begin to stretch everything in their lives that need expansion, Lord, so that you can begin to fill them up with way more than they can ever think or ask for, Father God. We want them to be overflowing in their blessing, overflowing in their joy, overflowing in their peace, overflowing in their same mind, Lord, overflowing in their families, Lord. Let there be no lack in their lives right now for their seed of obedience, Father. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We speak to our money, and we say, money, go, grow, manifest, and bring us back together. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Finance team, clean up, please. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have a prophetic release. Hallelujah. Where my prophets? 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So if you have anything, prophets in the house that you want to release prophetically, I know we got a lot of word today, but God is always speaking, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, so I just want to release this. Um, the Lord showed me, he said, um, our old patterns won't work in our new season. He wants to refresh us. Um, so our old ways of thinking and old mindsets won't work this time. Um, he took me to Luke 5 and 37. Um, you can't put new wine in old wives' hands. Yep. Um, or the bottles will perish. So God said, don't ruin your miracle by bringing last season into your new season. God said, this is the realm of fresh and new. It will bring a spiritual breakthrough that will allow, it will last an entire decade. So God said, get ready. That's good, prophet. Praise the Lord, saints. I know you don't know me. I'm Tierra's aunt. I um, want to tell you that when you gave the word of standing under the and getting the money. Um, I had a dream years ago. I think it was years ago. And the company that I'm affiliated with is Caramel House. And I was in a production with them. And I had a dream that I had put something on my teeth, on my mouth, like rubbish. And we were headed to a um, radio uh, interview and when we as we're going to the interview in my dream the, the interview was it was real life and, and, and forgive me for being because I'm trying to speak it without I'm really detailed so I'm trying to give it to you without going so deep in a lot of detail but um, so in the dream I had relish on my mouth. And I had stepped into this field. And I was headed to a conference where I was to speak and be involved in a women's ministry. Now, this was the dream. And I left the field and went back to my house. And that's when I put the whatever this was on my teeth, on my mouth. And then I went back to the field and I saw the hand of God open up the cloud and push this huge boulder of slats that are on the back of um, trucks that, you know, when they have, um, when they're bringing or delivering fruit and stuff. And in this dream, God opened up the cloud and pushed this boulder out. And when you said that, I forgot about this dream. When you said that, immediately God threw this back on me. I was going to call Tierra yesterday, and the girl's name is Tierra. I was going to call Tierra yesterday and ask her, and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm not one for fleeces, but I'm going to fleece you. Because for me to go, have her call me and invite me. And I forgot. 
in my obedience where I live, I had something happen and and, the, and in, anyway, and um, I did my yard yesterday, and I told Tara, look at my yard, I did, I did, a, good, yo, did a good job with my yard, and all this word that you all have been saying uh, happened to me just yesterday. But the one thing I did not know, and I kept waving my hand, but I said, Lord, they're, they're going to ask for someone to speak, and I'm just going to wait. I couldn't be still. I went out in your lobby and laughed so hard. I, I, I couldn't be still because I didn't know you're getting ready to break ground, but I want to tell you something. You don't know me, but you can test what I'm saying by the Holy Spirit. When we went to the radio station to talk to the, to be interviewed as the company, on our way there, I told a, a member of the staff at Caribou House the dream I had, and that God pushed out this boulder of money that broke the ground. To it broke it in the ground and people were running towards it because it was knocking holes in they were running towards it and I asked the Lord well, I asked the Lord well, why was I not walking towards it I was walking away he gave me my answer today didn't give it to me then but I want to let you know that Caramel House was trying to build on to their, onto the um, the old and and repair it, the Jella Theater. I was in two productions there with them, and the the CEO of the company came and said, while I was in the first production, that someone came and said, "Wow, this was such a wonderful production." And Rebecca, that's my name. He wanted to give us $75,000. That was the first time. Then the second time, they were doing the um, rededication of the Jell-O Theater, and the tickets were $250, and I'm bang, God. Oh, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go so bad, Lord, I want to go. I got a phone call. They're looking for volunteers. If you want to come, we just need you to dress. So I was able to go to the yeah. without paying a dime yeah. and be able to enjoy everything that it, all the people that paid the two hundred and fifty dollars I had on my you know I dressed, they asked us to dress in our banquet and I put on my pants. But I want to tell you this is the whole reason why I came because. When we went to the Jellof to get our instruction on being volunteers, again, the CEO said, Rebecca, the reason why we were able to open up the Jellof this early is because of the production you were in, the second one. And so not only have we broken ground earlier, we're going to do everything we have ever wanted to do with money left over. So I'm here to just repeat what I'm hearing. You're going to be able to do everything you ever wanted to do with money left over.
is Food Bank. So if you have not been contacted by our committee and you would like to volunteer, please see me after service. I'll make sure you get on the list. We need plenty of help. So um, please come out for our Food Bank. We'll be starting as early as 7.30 a.m. Um, coming up on the end of the month is the School of Healing by Apostle Peru. And when I tell you these tickets are going fast, you only have less than two weeks to purchase your ticket. The last date for ticket sales is August the 21st. So we're asking that you go on to Eventbrite and purchase your tickets um, as soon as possible. Um, this next announcement I'm super excited about. We will be going over to two services yes. starting on the first Sunday in September. So our first service will be at 8.15 in the morning for those early birds, and then our regular service will be at 10.45. So spread the word. Tell everyone um, about this. It's going to be on Facebook. We're advertising it, and we're just really super excited about this second service. All right, and then finally, of course, is Bible study. 9 a.m. on the Zoom call, and here at prayer at 6, and Bible study starts at 7. Come enjoy the word with us. Do we have any first-time visitors? I know a couple of people had to go. Um, any first-time visitors? Please stand. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. First, we're going to give you a virtual hug. We're going to give you a virtual hug. Normally, we are like this super hugging church, and we love to hug. If you're in this current environment, we can't do that, but we have to give you a virtual hug. Thank you so much for coming out today and sharing Jesus with you on behalf of uh, Apostle Greg and Senior Pastor T. We welcome you to New Beginning Ministries. Please feel free to come back at any time, including on Tuesdays. We have a very interactive Bible study. So, yeah, um, you'll enjoy it. I mean, just come out just one time and test this out and see how you like it, okay? All right, thank you so much. You can be seated. All right. And I, that's all I have because we introduce a real God to real people with real issues. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're excited about everything that God is doing during this time and during this season. You all can stand to your feet as we dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that came forth today. We are in expectation of your favor, Lord. We are in expectation of the manifested presence of your favor. We are in expectation that you will do everything that you said you would do, and we will be in a position to receive it. So, Lord, as we leave this place, but not your presence, we ask for your traveling mercies as we leave. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Love on somebody. Love on somebody. Virtually.